The season of Advent means there is something on the horizon, the likes of which has never been seen before. It is not possible to keep it from coming because it will. That is how Advent works. What is possible is to miss it, to turn just as it brushes past you. So stay, sit, linger, ponder, wait, behold, wonder. There will be time enough for rushing, for worrying, for pushing. For now, stay and wait, for something is on the horizon. This is a piece that was written by Jan Richardson. And it was brought to my attention by someone here in our community, Ricky Fisher. And she posted it on Instagram and immediately it resonated with me. I think because it reminds me of something deeply important in these last moments before the coming of Christ. She writes, is it not possible to keep it from coming because it will? That is how Advent works. And I think I like this because it reminds me of my place in the story. That I am not the centerpiece of this tale. I'm not the hero of this story. I can't speed it up and I can't slow it down. Now, sure, I pick up my piece and I participate as I can in the Christian tale. But here at Christmas, I am essentially only a witness. An audience to the generosity of God. And consider what we do at Christmas, this season of giving, right? I mean, we love, if only for a month, to imagine ourselves at our most generous. Basically benevolent and graciously gifting. And even those of us who aren't normally religious, we get in on the spirit of Christmas. And so we love to hear as newspapers trumpet the needy families we've adopted, as the Salvation Army officers provide kettles enabling us to be generous as we shop. Even this week, I was interviewed on the news for the work that we've done to sponsor a refugee family this Christmas. And how could we not, right? Jesus travels to Bethlehem by political decree as he waits in the womb. He flees to Egypt to escape political violence with his family after his birth. Our Lord was a migrant after all. And so this season brings out the best in us. Even Scrooge gets in on the act. And yet, as true and as appropriate and necessary as all this is, sometimes it makes it possible to forget that we are the recipients, not the benefactors at Christmas. Have you ever felt the anxiety of receiving a gift? Out of the blue from someone you hardly knew, at least you didn't expect to get a gift from. And it wasn't just a joke gift or a gag offering. I remember those Secret Santa games, gift exchanges all the time. I would always give the gift of myself, which meant I took a photo of myself, I signed it, put it in a frame and wrapped it up and gave it to someone. Because you know what they say, <laughs> give what you would like to receive. And I would love that sitting on my bedside. But <laughs> no, imagine this, you got a gift and it was somehow actually something you wanted. You didn't know you did and you didn't ask for it, but there it was given to you by someone you didn't expect with nothing for you to give in return. And so what do we all do in that moment in response? We scramble somehow to prepare an excuse or return a gift. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot your gift at home. I'll have to get it to you next week. And we imagine how we can go through the mechanics of getting a gift in time so that we can reciprocate. Come on, you know what I mean. You've done that before. And it's not gratitude that drives us. It's not even friendships. It is this strange gift guilt that motivates us. Because somehow a gift lays a claim on us. And we don't want to be indebted in that way. It may well be, as Jesus says, that it is more blessed to give. But at times it seems it is much harder to receive well. Uh, do you blush when someone pays you a compliment? Do you demure when someone draws attention to you? Uh, even those of us who love the spotlight, those of us who wear fancy scarves and strap microphones to our faces, we still aren't always sure what to do with a genuine compliment. And I think perhaps this is because we prefer to imagine ourselves as the givers. The powerful, competent, self-sufficient, capable ones who dispense generosity. 
not the ones who find ourselves needing it. And yet, this is, of course, in direct contradiction with the biblical narrative of Christmas. For here, we are portrayed not as the generous benefactors we imagine ourselves to be, but as the ones to whom gift comes. Now, don't misunderstand me. Uh, for generosity to beget generosity, this is, of course, appropriate. And by all means, give generously tomorrow. And celebrate in the glow of that moment for as long as you possibly can. But Christmas, at its core, is a story designed to reinvent our categories. William Willimon says it this way. God wanted to do something so strange for us. So utterly beyond the bounds of human imagination. So foreign to human projection that God had to resort to angels, pregnant virgins, and stars in the sky to get it done. We didn't think of it. We didn't understand it or approve it. All we could do at Bethlehem was receive it. A gift from a God we hardly knew. And so somehow this strange story invites us. It teaches us, it compels us to be receivers. And the first word of the church born out of such an odd nativity is that we are receivers before we are anything else. Before we give, before we go, before we hardly know what it means to be generous. God is gracious toward us. And so you have been generous this Christmas. Uh, this community has surpassed even my most optimistic projections for what we could have accomplished together this Advent. And you will be generous this Christmas. You will give your gifts and your time and your presence to each other. Of that I have no doubt. But may you remember this Advent that before you are anything else, you are one who has received this Christmas. The grace and the breath and the life and the peace that comes from a God you hardly knew. And so I pray that in that moment, when the light of Christ finally touches you, you would not blush or demure or turn away from this gift. But instead, that you would embrace the divine with pure gratitude. Because this is the God who has promised to make all things new. And one day his head will hang to keep that bond. But until then, we cradle his neck to keep him steady. And now past in our direction, the Father offers us this final gift. Here, would you like to hold him? And so I invite you to come tonight to receive the good gift, the Eucharisto of Christ, and to hold in your hands the paradox of his coming and suffering and glory and gift, the mystery of God's vulnerability and his strength made perfect for you. And so as the lights dim and the band sings one more time, I invite you to come up the center aisle, to take the bread and the grape that represents the cup and then to eat. And as you return along the outside aisles tonight, you will find a basket of candles. I invite you to pick one up before you return to your seat and to hold it for that final moment when we will light the Christ candle together and we will allow his gift to illuminate more than this room, but ultimately our hearts. So I invite you to come, eat, take a candle, and return to your seat as the grateful recipient of all that you have been given this Christmas. Come. To guide you home. So here in this candle, we receive the gift of Christ's birth and his resurrection, his coming and his coming again for us. A small symbol of the brilliance and the light of this story. The hope of God having finally arrived. Mm. 
And so as I light the Christ candle, and I take it and light my candle, I'm going to pass that to those of you in the audience. And I ask that you will hold it close and careful, for one small flame is a very fragile thing. And yet, as we experience the gift of Christmas in our world, and we add our small sliver of hope into that story, may we now see his light manifest with us. The light that blazed in the darkness, the light that could not be put out. So as I come down to the front row, and as we sing again, I invite you to give this gift of light to those who sit beside you and behind you until all have received the gift of light this Christmas. Sleep in heavenly peace. Now, before I read a final benediction, I'm going to ask you to blow out your candles. And I will remind you uh, to please place them in the baskets as you leave the room tonight. That will help us clean up as you go. But thank you for spending some of your Christmas Eve with us tonight. May it be a blessed and gift-filled day for you, for each of you. Let's pray. O God of eternal love and master of glorious, simple, unexpected gifts, you've heard the cry of our hearts and you have come down to us. Freely you gave us your love, inviting us only to receive. Make us an instrument of peace in your world. Where there is darkness, let us shine your light. And may that light cause us to shine so brightly that we would bring hope into the dark, courage to the fearful, generosity to the forgotten, and welcome to those to whom there is nowhere left to turn. All we are has been gifted to us. Now may we, in turn, give ourselves away. Amen. May you go in peace with the light of Christ in your heart this Advent.